Hi everyone! Today, we're going to be talking about Civilizations, one of the fastest civilization building games we've ever played. So when I say civilization building game, what do you think of? Well, aside from like textbooks and sawdust, <laughs> um, no, civilization building sounds like a big, sweeping, complicated game with tech trees and wars and all sorts of like attrition to control a map and knock other people off a board or maybe build a tower that's taller than <laughs> everybody else's and so you win or something like that. Yeah. Civilizations? Nothing like that. Not at all. In this game, you're not trying to take over an area or, you know, fight your opponent. There's no map. Yeah, you're just building a simple tableau. You're getting maybe, you know, one or two cards at every At the turn? maximum, uh, every yeah. round. And speaking of rounds, there's only nine of them. The game yeah. is blisteringly short. We played it in, like, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, easy. Uh, although none of us suffer from analysis paralysis. <laughs> uh, but, it's a, but it's a short game. It's a, it's a family weight game. It's actually pretty easy to, to wrap your brain around uh, the mechanisms, and so it's kind of a game that anybody can play. Yeah, you only have to worry about three resources. You've got stone, wood, and the mysterious cheese? We think it's either cheese or Pac-Man, but either way it represents food, and either way that works. Um, you'll be gathering up these these resources using a, a really clever uh, action selection thing that we're going to go over in a little bit more detail, and then you'll spend them developing your, your civilization. So the civilization's main board is simply uh, an organizational thing. Here you have a uh, tracker for which era you're in, and the arrow changes every three rounds, places for each of the three resources to go, and the draw decks uh, that will populate the offer for when you're purchasing um, developments for your, for your civilization. Now, everybody starts the game with a deck of these potential action cards, and everybody's actions are the same. Most of these are about gathering resources, although there are some that are about manipulating resources, and at least one about being a jerk and stealing from everybody else. And the way the game works is on uh, the active player's turn, they're going to take a look at their available actions, they're going to figure out what resources they're going to want to purchase the thing that they're after, and then, in a really clever bit of design, they're going to lay one card face up that lets everyone know that they're taking that action, and then they're going to look and they're going to decide on another action, and they're going to lay it face down. Now it's the next player's turn to decide what actions they're going to take. Now, integral to understanding the strategy, of course, is understanding the fact that all actions are affected by how many other players are taking them. Most of the resource acquisition actions, like logging and quarrying and stuff like that, are most potent when exactly two players select that action during the turn. One player takes the logging action, that player gains two wood tokens, Two players take the logging action on the same turn, each of those players gains three wood tokens. But if three or more players take the logging action, well, congratulations, you've overlogged, and now everybody only gets one wood token. So, by deciding which card you're laying face up and face down, you're clearly telling the rest of the table something. Whether you're telling them, hey, jump on and do some logging with me, or just put you on notice, I'm doing this and don't lay a third one down uh, is, is part of the strategy. And of course, there's this face-down card that nobody knows, and you're not really allowed or supposed to tell people what it is that you're doing. So let's say green puts these cards down, and then orange, on their turn, takes a look and says, oh, a logging card? Okay, well, I want to get wood for purchasing things later, and I'm also going to do this, and lay that card face down. And of course, if there was a third or a fourth player, they do their thing. Then, as soon as everybody's selected their actions, we flip them over, and then we start resolving in number order. And you have a handy cheat sheet that will tell you the order 
as well as explaining all of the iconography in the game. And so in this case, both players, hooray, went logging. And as long as no one else did, both players are going to get three wood tokens apiece. Then green went quarrying and no one else did, so green will get two stone. And orange went slacking, which means they'll get victory points, just for, you know, relaxing. Then, once this phase is over, you discard the action cards. Those aren't available until the next uh, round, the er next era starts, the next age. And then the purchase happens in, in player order. Everybody gets to take the resources that they have, whether they're left over from last round or that they've accrued this round, and then they get to make the purchase. So, for example, maybe green wants to spend two wood and a stone to buy this axe. That axe is worth a victory point at the end of the game, and it will give green the power that for the rest of the game, when they do logging, they gain one extra wood, no matter how much wood they might have gotten. This uh, action selection system is very simple and very, very clever because there's this tension of which card do I show, which card do I hide, or is the player who played this card face down trying to do something that no one else will benefit from, or should I try to figure out what that card is so that I can either jump in on it to gain the benefit, or maybe be the third player uh, that neutralizes that action for the others. It's very tense in a very light way, if that makes any sense, and it's extremely clever. Victory points are measured in smiley faces. Woohoo! <laughs> and in the first and second ages of the game, you're going to be drawing from one pile of cards, and these cards are going to give you a smaller amount of victory points, but they're going to give you um, ways of adding to your tableau easier. Like this one will let you pay one less resource to add building cards to your tableau. In the third age, you're going to get the major points, many smiley faces. So, like this one, if you build a tablet, you're going to get two smiley faces. But if your civilization is advanced enough to build feminism, you're going to get four. Woohoo! <laughs> Whoever gets the most smiley faces at the end of the game wins. That checks out. And that's civilizations. What do you think? I like it. I think it's a pretty fun little game. My only problem with it is it feels too short. Yeah, I, I get you there. Uh, I think the art is great. The illustrations are really neat. I think that the um, action selection mechanic is fantastic, actually. I think it's incredibly clever. But I, I completely understand what you're talking about. Um, I just wish it had just a little bit more meat on its bones. Like, I don't think it needs another resource to manage. I don't yeah. think it needs another kind of card. It's just short somehow and and you think that you know you get a card and you think oh this is going to be a synergistic thing i'm going to get to do this up it it's probably good. It'll be won't. over yeah, yeah it'll be over so fast yeah i'll i'll be starting to build up a tableau and i'll think oh this is telling an interesting story and maybe i'll be able to do this and by the time i finally figured it out well it's over <laughs> <laughs> that said though i think the brevity is kind of one of the extremely positive qualities. I think that if it was longer, uh, I, I don't know if the limited mechanics and limited interactions would be interesting, played out over the course of 20 rounds. Uh, and to have a game like this with really great art and really neat components, you know, the bits are really nice, um, that you can bang out in 15, 20 minutes. I mean, the I'm looking at the box. It says 45 minutes. I think that's. Yeah, that's I think that's <laughs> insane. Like maybe full player compliment. Yeah, new players. New players. Yeah, but to us, this this is a 20 minute game, a half hour at the at the absolute most. I uh, do I do think it's a good like game night game. You know, yes. Bring it for new players. For sure. You know, it's a great way to you know. Get something in between longer games. Yeah, it's not exactly a filler weight game. It's it's just a tiny bit heavier than what I would think of as a filler. Um, but it, it's it's certainly not a brain burner by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. Uh, and if you can appreciate it for what it is and not kind of lament what it isn't, uh, I think it's actually a, a great little game for, for its weight class. And, and I think you're right. I think it's a totally a, a fantastic board game night <laughs> game. And that's Civilizations. 
We really like it, and if you guys have any comments or questions on it, or if you want to suggest the next game for us to review, leave it in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Andrew, this is Jess from Gameosity. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next game. Enjoy that review? Then please like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and check out our full reviews on Gameosity.com.